Open for Views. Hey, and welcome to Open for Views. Today, let's talk about Diogenes the Cynic. I have my little flags and note cards. I take this very seriously. Uh, for the people who do not know about Diogenes, let me just give you a little bit of a primer of who the guy was. Uh, he was from Greece. He's from Sinope. And he uh, worked with his father. His father was a banker. He worked in the mint making money. And he thought it was a good idea one day to deface the currency. He approached the uh, Delphian Oracle, the local Delphian Oracle, to ask their advice, should I? Should I Should I deface the currency? And they said something along the lines of, uh, if, if you feel that it's something that must be done, do it. And people really don't know if he was egged on to do it by fellow employees or not, but he did it, and uh, his father was jailed, and he was exiled. And so he eventually ended up in Athens. And that's where all the wild stories of him come from, of him, you know, living in a jar... Uh, being publicly indecent, uh, his interactions with Alexander the Great, all of those, which we'll go over some of them. Uh, but the main aim of this video is to discuss the individual and why his uh, life and general overall look at philosophy are something that should be valued. So, the main thing that he's probably known for that a lot of people recognize is he was the guy who would walk around in broad daylight with a lantern and he'd go up to people and go up to men in particular and hold this lantern up in their face because he was looking for a good man, a man of virtue, a man of practicality. And uh, he had a very hard time <laughs> locating a good man. Uh, there's an instance where he called for, for men. He's, men, come all men. And these people came up to him. And didn't like any of them, so he took his stick and he smashed them all over the head. <laughs> and he said, I, I called for men, not scum. So, you know, that's a pretty good way for everybody to get introduced to the character known as Diogenes. Uh, he's also the guy behind uh, the Plato's Man incident when Plato was giving a lecture Diogenes showed up with a chicken and he ripped the fe he was holding it by the neck and he ripped all the feathers off and he said behold Plato's man and uh, thus pretty much began his feud <laughs> with Plato he was more of a student you know if you want to say of of uh, Socrates than he was uh, Plato his interactions with Alexander the Great uh, the one that's most famously known is uh, Alexander marches into Athens with his men, and he, he's looking for Diogenes, because Diogenes at this time is, is pretty legendary. And Alexander finds him, and he tells, he's, uh, Diogenes is there, he's laying, he's all stretched out, sunning, you know, potentially in the nude, because you know, it's Greece, and that's the era. And so he asks Diogenes, Alexander the Great asks Diogenes, you know, ask of me anything you will. And Diogenes on face says, get out of my sunlight. <laughs> and so Alexander the Great leaves, and he's very happy about this interaction with him. And his compatriots, uh, Alexander's compatriots, are kind of uh, chiding the, uh, the experience they had with Diogenes. And he's, Alexander corrects him, he goes, no, 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 if... if if I were not Alexander the Great, I would want to be Diogenes. And then the other thing <laughs> that he's known for, and it's pretty bad, it's pretty bad. Um, let's just call it public indecency, all right, for the sake of, of, of the video, to keep the video as safe as humanly possible. Uh, but the man had a, uh, had a purpose behind it. There was a it's been reported that it happened on multiple occasions, but the one occasion that I, more than likely, I believe, was he was doing it as a lesson to another beggar, where he did it, and this beggar came up next, next to this man, <laughs> and the beggar came up to him, he's like, what are you doing, are you mad? <laughs> and Diogenes looked him straight in the eyes and said, if only I could cure my hunger by rubbing my stomach. 
And so it seems to me that this was a way, you know, he, he delivered his message in a lot of really mm, interesting ways. <laughs> uh, you could say that. But he, uh, he, one of his big things was virtue. And he was very, very big on being uh, uh, practical, virtuous. And his claim was, is that the gods, and at the time, the gods being Zeus, uh, the god being Zeus, rather, and, you know, all the, the pantheon of gods in ancient Greece, uh, the gods had given humans an extremely easy way to live. But there were things in the mortal realm that blinded humans to it, blinded humanity to living a happy, full life with, um, I shouldn't say no confrontation because he was uh, quite confrontational, <laughs> but uh, leaving a, living a life that was uh, fulfilling and uh, energizing for the spirit. And he, he really liked uh, just plain, plain speech. Someone had asked him, uh, what is one of the greatest achievements for a man? And he said, plain speaking. And I find that interesting because uh, his interactions with Plato, Plato was known as a man who uh, talked a lot, talked, said, uh, said a lot of things, talked around a lot of subjects to try to get people to look at the center issue as, as a means of almost uh, uh, non-confrontational uh, discussion to, to kind of, you know, not necessarily beat around the bush, but that seems to be the way that Diogenes saw uh, Plato's discourse. There was a time when Diogenes saw a, uh, a young man reprimanding his father in public, and he didn't like that too much. And he came up to the, the guy and said uh, something along the lines of, you know, why are you reproaching the man? that brought you into the world and gave you such a high opinion of yourself. Uh, which, to me, is something still to this, you know, obviously still to this day is going on. I, mean, I, I, I think that's the whole point of, of philosophy in general, is that these are human issues, and these are issues that there's a very large chance that will never be solved, and will never be resolved, uh, because it's just built within us, to have these uh, problems with each other and these problems with ourselves. He told, or rather someone asked him one time how to get revenge. And that's an age old, age old issue is revenge. <laughs> and how, what's the best way to exact revenge on somebody? And he informed them, become a good an honest person. And that's, you know, when, when you read that, the first time you read that, it kind of jumps off of the page at you. Because that's, 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 like, that's almost like the key to everything. You know, you've, you've let them have it. You've let the person who wronged you, they're done. <laughs> if you become the good and honest person, uh, in whatever way that they wronged you, wronged you or whatever perceived slight there was, uh, in your life, by you becoming a good and honest person, a person who's going out of their way to be good and be honest and tell uh, tell the truth, uh, live live life virtuously, uh, seemed like a, a really good thing. Even back then, in this this era, with you know, there's tons of warfare, tons of death. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But it's, it's, it's a matter, with Diogenes, it was a matter of perspective in a lot of these situations. And uh, there was an instance where he is in uh, a temple. And you know, the, the, the temple in Athens, it's, you kind of think about it, it's a place where at the time lots of, uh, uh, lots of money is coming into. People are paying tribute. They're leaving offerings. And so he's there, or outside of it, potentially. And he sees a man with a, with a bowl from inside of the temple and just 
He is booking it. He's stealing it. And all of a sudden, some people from the temple who work there start chasing, you know, give chase. And they start tearing after the guy. And this just completely kills Diogenes. He just thinks it's the funniest thing. And he says, look, the big thieves are after the little thief. And it's his, it's that perspective issue with him. He's, uh... <laughs> He'll, he'll look at something sideways, you know, he twists his head first, and then he'll look at it upside down. <laughs> it's just this way he had of completely examining a situation that uh, I find really interesting. Uh, people would often make fun of him. They would laugh at him for the way he lived. I mean, I, I mentioned earlier that he lived in a jar. Uh, there was an instance, I'm saying that a lot, there was an instance, so I hope you don't get tired of hearing... There, there was an instance, because I'm probably going to say it about six more times, <laughs> but there was a group of people who was making fun of him, and I believe it was a fellow beggar, they communicated, it was, you know, it was a communal thing, came up to him and said, they're, they're laughing at you, they're laughing at you, you know, you know shape up, or whatever the, the person's um, uh, end result, whatever they wanted the end result to be, and the way he broke it down was donkeys laugh at humans. But humans don't give any credence to the braise of a donkey. Like, I'm not going to give any attention to their laughter. And so he had to, it was his way of, of almost hyper-rationalizing his ascetic lifestyle. And he had to, because at that point... It was all he had because I mean he's not gonna he's not gonna go work for another bank, right? He's he's not gonna go off and you know, hey dad, get me another job. Not gonna happen. So you think about you think about Athens at the time. So Athens is this this very technologically advanced, uh, massive city. It's a crossroads of the universe. It was New York, you know, back then. And so there's these temples, and they're paying tribute to the gods. And so uh, Plato one time is, I was about to say, there was an instance, but I did, and I caught myself. <laughs> Plato was, or uh, uh, Plato approached Diogenes as he was washing some vegetables and fruit. And Plato kind of reprimanded him and said, you wouldn't need to do that if you just paid tribute to Dionysius. And of course, Diogenes being the uh, very witty fellow that he is, said, well, if, if you would come over here and wash the fruits and vegetables with me, you wouldn't need to pay tribute to Dionysius. <laughs> and it's this, it's this perspective, as I said, it's this perspective issue with Diogenes that a lot of people don't understand. They hear the public indecency thing and they just drop them immediately. And they don't care to look at the, um, the, the merit that the guy had throughout the rest of his life. Talking about Athens, talking about being a very big city, being uh, very wealthy, there was uh, an instance... Oh, I did it again! <laughs> A beggar approached him and was really just totally lamenting that Athens was really expensive. And Diogenes grabbed the man by the hand and took him down the street. And he took him into a butcher shop. And in the butcher shop, he asked the butcher, Diogenes asked the butcher, he said, how much for, your, for a cut of your finest meat? told him some crazy price and he goes looks at the beggar and goes ah the city is indeed expensive and so he takes him down the street to another place takes him to i believe to a perfume shop and he asks him yeah he asks him how much for a bottle of myrrh and he tell the person at the counter tells him a crazy amount and he goes ah the city of athens is indeed expensive and he takes him to a fabric shop and he says how much uh for enough fabric to make a cloak tells him this amount it's nuts Ah, the city of Athens is indeed expensive. And so Diogenes grabs him by the hand and takes him down further into town. And he takes him into this store. 
that's selling lupin seeds. He sells seeds in general, but he asks for, you know, how much for a quart of lupin seeds? And they tell him it's, a, you know, it's like a copper, really slow, or a really low amount. And he goes, oh, the city is not so expensive. And then he goes down the street, goes into a, uh, uh, like a cloth shop, and says, how much for enough to make a cloak? Small amount. Ah, the city of Athens is not so expensive. And so he was this master of, of hyper-rationalization, of taking an issue that a person had and reducing it to its absolute bare necessity. And he was able to just flip the script, right? He, had, he was an absolute master of it. And he was also a, this, this master of humility. He would go to statues. This is early, early in his career <laughs> as a beggar. He would approach statues and beg them for money. And this, this really hit hard when I read this. And his reasoning for doing it was he'd beg, he'd beg a statue. You know, he got a drachma, you know, he got some copper. And another beggar approached him and said, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? You're talking to a statue, but the person's not real. Are you nuts? And he turned to the man and said, I'm getting practice in being refused. And so this man is there, Diogenes, basically trying to harden his, harden his heart and his gut to being told, no, absolutely not. No, I'm just going to walk on by you. I'm not going to make eye contact with you. I'm not even going to look at you. Absolutely not. He'd also go into brothels. If he get a little bit of, a little bit of this, he'd go into a brothel. And of course, he'd go into a brothel for you know the regular means that an individual would go into a brothel. Regular. <laughs> but he would also go into a brothel to basically come to verbal blows with the women who worked there. <laughs> he would pay money for him to throw insults at them and for them to insult him. And there's, there's no better person to gut somebody uh, than a woman. I know that, that might make some people a little irritated, but it's true because a woman uh, can, is very easily able to recognize um, the faults within an individual, within an individual, and able to see it's. I think it has a. It's something to do with uh, with raising children in seeing the way a child emotionally develops and seeing their strengths and weaknesses. I think it's potentially a maternal instinct. But you know what better way to absolutely debase yourself and get destroyed uh, emotionally, psychologically than going to a brothel. I mean, these, these are women who, these aren't just regular women. These are women who have, they've been with, with kings, they've been with priests, they've been with the, with the dregs of society, they've been with husbands, they've been with all of these different types of people, and they've been able to examine every single one, and they're able to recognize the faults in all these, this, this myriad, uh, I guess you could say, collection of men. And so they were able to form a, um, a kind of a glue of what would absolutely obliterate a man's ego. And he would, Diogenes would claim that praise was something that wasn't good. Praise was something that... Uh, would actually damage a person because it would inflate their ego. And he thought that uh, receiving uh, reproach or receiving condemnation was actually more worthwhile because you could build something with it. You could build character. You could, you know, as I said before, he's very witty, and it would give him an opportunity to retort or rebuke the individual who either chastised him, refused him, or any of those things. He would also thank fortune for misfortune. 
because he understood trial. He understood tribulation. And he <laughs> would say, uh, I thank fortune. If something went wrong, if something went totally wrong, you know, he would thank fortune for being manly in denying him. And that's a, that's a really interesting concept to me. That's a very uh, uh, able to recognize rock bottom. You know, rock bottom is something you hear uh, like at Alcoholics Anonymous or you hear during some type of counseling session, like if someone has uh, lost a parent or, or God forbid someone's lost a child. Uh, but rock bottom is something that some people cannot escape from because they had no type of um, adversity in that respect to escape. They had no, you know, they weren't, you know, I'm not saying bullying or being picked on is good. That's great. It's a good thing. But it can build character. And I'm not talking about, you know, brutal, you know, the brutalizing of an individual. I don't think that's good at all. But uh, rock bottom is either something you escape from or it's it's this... It's this almost a, a beast that will consume the individual. And they're not the individual anymore. They, be, they become rock bottom. They become this person who is going to destroy anything that they recognize as weak or they recognize as good. And they don't want to escape that because there's this... Human psychology is so strange. The brain is really weird. <laughs> but people find comfort in the absolute depths of hell that they can experience because it's familiar to them. And it's a part of them. And, you know, it's this, you know, there's the whole, um, you're perfect the way you are, even if uh, you are uh, reprehensible. To the, to the fullest extent of being a terrible, terrible, terrible person. It's, it's, it's rough. It sounds really rough that, that people can totally adapt to it and it's just normal to them, it being a beast. But one of my favorite stories of Diogenes, I went on a, I went on a tear there. I just started rambling. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're talking about Diogenes. Uh, was one day, he, uh, when he was, when he first went into, uh, to uh, uh, begging or philosophy, he uh, received a, a cup, a cloak. Uh, which would double over because he could use it as a blanket or during like harsh weather and a pouch to hold food. And uh, the cup, the cup was used for water. And he'd go and gather water out of a fountain or he'd, he'd gather water out of a lake. And one day he saw a very young boy go up to a lake and cup his hands like this, just cup his hands and scoop out the water and drink it. And this made Diogenes furious because he felt like he had wasted his God-given potential to maximize the use of his human body. And so what he did is he took his cup that he had and he smashed it on the ground, or one of the stories claims. And he smashes it on the ground. And from that point on, he would use his hands to consume water from fountains and from uh, other bodies of water. But Diogenes seems like a guy who whose entire philosophy was built out of this this one uh, exchange that he had with a bunch of people. And I want to talk about it last. But he was, uh, he was in the street, and he was begging, and he was talking about something very serious. You know, that's what he would do. When he'd beg, he would try to 
discuss pertinent issues, the ills of society or um, the dangers of, of, you know, what was happening in the era. And people are just milling about, not even paying attention to him. And then he just starts to whistle, whistle this song. And people stop and they turn, turn to him and they approach him. And this made him furious. This made the guy absolutely furious. And he basically said, you know, how dare you? How, how dare you turn your attention to absolute nonsense when you were just a moment ago turning your backs to me when I'm trying to discuss serious matters? And it was his way. It was his way. You know, he wasn't happy that they were turned to him. Oh, I finally have their attention. No, it wasn't that. Absolutely not. For him, it was almost an insult that he had to get their attention by essentially acting like a fool and whistling this little silly, you know, I'd love to know what it sounded like because I'm sure it was complete and total nonsense. <laughs> you know, some distraction that he was trying to get these people to notice to notice what he was talking about. And then he would use that as an opportunity to teach them a lesson about uh, distractions versus serious matters, uh, which is something I think is still going on today. A lot of us have blinders on. I mean, I, I run a channel here where I talk about, you know, board games and video games, which are absolutely distractions. They're fun, though, right? But there's a lot that we can learn from... Um, from, from uh, dead men, dead people, who have uh, lived, lived lives that are filled with uh, strife and angst and challenges that we still have today. We still are dealing with a lot of these issues, and it would be nice, it would be nice if we could just kind of, you know, throw everything down and be done with it but it doesn't seem like it but some of us some of us can can look beyond it some of us can you know some people say that the the things that we experience uh in in reality today uh are are blinding us to what's actually happening you know the the media that we consume, the 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 games that we play, and you know it's almost like they're blinders. You know it's these things that kind of keep you, you know, focused on one thing. You know, uh, buying stuff or uh, you know keeping some entity happy or whatever it is. But there are there's a lot of us here <laughs> and there's a lot of uh, a lot of good that can be done if we just I would say follow what Diogenes did. I'm not talking about what he did in public. <laughs> that would be a bit of a mess. <laughs> but uh being being virtuous uh being practical and being humble and it's something a lot of us could benefit from and it would it would make things a lot better in the long run i believe so the time has come <laughs> we were open before but now we're closed beat it